Hey, welcome back to the Rock Fantasy YouTube channel. We're back with another episode of Rock Fantasy Files, and we are delving into another 1983 album battle with three albums, of course, celebrating their 40th anniversaries. Can you believe it? 40 years ago already. And these are three heavyweights, and they're all kind of entwined. It was uh, Christian's uh, idea to do this. He's on the panel tonight. We're doing it. We're taping this on a, on a Monday night. Because Mr. Pete Pardo is off tonight, and I've I've stolen Craig Kaminsky <laughs> from Sea of Tranquility. I've stolen Chris Allo from the Sea of Tranquility, Hudson Valley Squares, and Mr. Pardo may make a surprise appearance later. He uh, wants to hop in tonight. So uh, it's Black Sabbaths, Born Again, versus Dio's Holy Diver, versus Ozzy Osbourne's Bark at the Moon. Black Sabbath released their 11th studio album. Ian Gillen has been brought in to replace Ronnie James Dio, joining original members on the recording, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, and Bill Ward. It hit number 39 on the Billboard Top 200. Now to the second album we're talking about, Ronnie James Dio releases his first solo album, bringing along Vinny Apice and former Rainbow bassist Jimmy Bain and guitarist Vivian Campbell. The album went to sell over 2 million copies in the United States and hit number 46 on the Billboard 200. Last but not least, Ozzy Osbourne released Bark at the Moon, the first to feature new guitarist Jakey Lee, of course, after the tragic death of Randy Rhodes, with Bob ba Bob Daisley on bass, Tommy Aldridge on drums, and Don Airy on keyboards. It, picked at number, it peaked at number 19 on the Billboard 200 and has sold over 3 million copies in the United States. So, my question to all you guys tonight is what is your favorite? What is your second favorite? What is your least favorite? I'm going to go and kick things off. We got a good panel of guests. We got Count Ralphus. We got Ovi staying up all night in Norway with us. We got Tony Dio. And when, boy, he better pick Dio because his name is Dio. Uh, <laughs> Craig Kaminsky is here. Christopher Allo. Mr. Ed Farsley, Armageddon Productions. We got Christian. I'm never going to pronounce your last name correctly, so please do. And we got Dennis Sasquatch Barth from Aggression and, of course, John McAtee from the Mighty Incantation on our panels tonight. This sounds like a fun one. A little harder than last week, I think. May last week was pretty hard, too, the Slayer versus Metallica. But let's kick things off. We're going to start off with Ed because Ed has to go to work later. So, Ed, <laughs> welcome to the party. How we doing, guys? Good to see you. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Fantastic albums. Um, 83 was a hell of a great year. Um, as far as the, the top three, my bottom three, which I hate to say bottom three because it's a great album, Bark at the Moon. Um, Bark at the Moon is a fantastic album. doesn't quite stand up to the first two albums because the first two are just absolutely flawless masterpieces. Uh, but Bark at the Moon is absolutely a fantastic record. Um, Jakey e. Lee, great, great replacement for Randy Rhodes. I mean, no one can replace Randy, but Jakey e. Lee is a fantastic guitarist and just shreds on this entire album. Um, to be honest, I haven't heard the entire album in a while straight through um, mm -hmm. and brought back a lot of great memories. Uh, really fantastic record. Uh, as far as the top three songs, uh, number three, Waiting for Darkness. Uh, just a haunting song, uh, lyrically, musically, vocally, just uh, just very haunting, haunting uh, rhythms. Uh, number two, Center of Eternity, uh, another great song. Starts off with a very operatic opening, similar to Mr. Crowley, and just really kicks it in then. Uh, number one song on the album, Rock and Roll Rebel. Uh, great wow. beginning, killer vocals, uh, killer uh, lyric uh, vocal lines. And just a great, just as a 14-year-old kid, just loving that song. Uh, and that was like, you know, everybody's anthem growing up as a teenager. We had a rock and roll rebel. Uh, so just a great record all around. Uh, number two in my list, uh, Black Sabbath, Born Again. Now, this is actually a hard choice deciding who was number one and number two between Born Again and Holy Diver. But uh, going with Born Again for number two, um, for me, an absolute super group of uh, the perfect merging of Black Sabbath and Deep Purple. Um, Ian Gillen, one of my all-time favorite vocalists, and he just kills it on this album. Um, every time he screams, it just goes right through me. It's just so brilliant. Um, some of the lyrics, uh, not very compelling or even coherent, um, but enjoyable. Uh, some of the lyrics, you know, got a little more thought behind them. Some of them are just kind of mindless, but the music is just so 
amazingly heavy and brutal that it just it doesn't matter. It's just great. Uh, top three songs. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Born Again. Uh, very subdued, haunting, beautiful rhythms, beautiful melody, just a great song. Uh, number two, uh, Trashed, just blistering start to the album, blistering. And again, that merging of Deep Purple, this song sounds like Highway Star Part 2. Uh, just a brilliant song from start to finish, just constant intensity, uh, relentless. Uh, number one song, Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Oh. You forgot what record you're talking about. Drum yeah. roll. <laughs> Drum roll. Disturbing the priest. There's only nine songs on a record, I think. I hate, so. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> His notes disappeared. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Zero the Hero. Oh. I've mean, got my notes, but I didn't write the song. I'm just like, what the hell song is it? Zero the Hero, of course. Just absolutely brutal song, brutal song. Uh, I remember right. seeing that video and just being blown away by it. <laughs> so again, born again, fantastic wicked book. video, wicked video, yeah. exactly, wicked yeah. video. Yeah. Uh, number one album, obviously, Holy Diver. Um, Dio is just a brilliant vocalist, and his vocals on this album are amongst the best of all time. Uh, he's never sounded better, never sounded stronger. Um, Coming from Black Sabbath, of course, I was excited to hear the album. Check it out, because Dio was a great vocalist, and um, he delivered 200% on this album. Mm -hmm. uh, top three songs. Uh, number three, Invisible. Uh, very mellow, heavy riffing, great solos, vocal lines, just killer song round, all around. Uh, number two, Don't Talk to Strangers. Just absolutely perfect song from start to finish. Just fantastic. Uh, number one, of course, Holy Diver. Um, just a brilliant song. Just fantastic. Um, like I said, Dio has never sounded better. Um, and a great debut album that led to a great career. Um, there you have it. Of my top three, Dio's number one, Sabbath number two, and Ozzy is number three. Take it away. Thank you so much, Ed. And we're going to go to the next person that doesn't want to hang out all night, but I bet you he might hang out because it's a good subject. And uh, Chris Alley, you probably think I'm talking about you. You're so vain. <laughs> but as soon as as soon as Chris is done, of course, everyone's going to tune out because he's such a big star, media oh, mogul. Take it you easy. know, take it easy. friends with David LaGreca <laughs> from Busted Open podcast. The man is a rock star. He's traveled to all around the world. But Chris Allo, we need to hear your point of view on this one now. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. Thanks awesome for coming. Panel with these uh, the esteemed panel here. Uh, yeah, this is a great uh, three-way fight. These are three killer records, no matter how you slice it. Uh, but my number three, uh, similar to Ed, I'm going uh, Bark at the Moon. Uh, I think it's a, a really good record. It was actually the first uh, Ozzy solo record I ever bought. Uh, I interviewed Jakey Lee uh, a couple of years ago when he did his uh, uh, Red Dragon Cartel uh, solo record. And I talked about Bark at the Moon quite a bit. And he absolutely said, yeah, you know, he, he felt he was under a ton of pressure, you know, trying to replace Randy Rhodes. But, hey, you know, they, what they say, pressure makes diamonds. And I think, the, you know, they came out with a killer record. Uh, my favorite tracks are, are Bark at the Moon, uh, Center of Eternity, and Waiting for Darkness, which is probably in my top three or four favorite Aussie tracks ever. Um, but I think Slow Down is a shitter. And I fucking hate So Tired. Every time I hear that fucking song, the video is like the worst shit ever. I don't know what they were thinking. Um, uh, Jakey e. Lee told me that, um, you know, it was a big deal with the whole publishing thing and he got screwed out of royalties. But he was like, all right, fuck it. I'm just going to, I'm the new kid, so I'm just going to take it. Uh, but then when it happened again with Ultimate Sin, that's why. that's when he was like, I'm out of here. But at least uh, he did make, you know, two really good records. Uh, with Ozzy, and yeah, that's my uh, that's my number three. Uh, for number two, uh, out of this three way fight, it, it's a tough one, Steve. Oh. But I, I got to go, Holy Diver. All right. Uh, yeah, Ronnie's first uh, solo record. I mean, I vividly remember being a twelve year old kid, and you know, in nineteen eighty three, it's hard to fathom. But not only did MTV play um, music videos. 
but they mm. played rock videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a kid, I remember seeing Holy Diver and Rainbow in the Dark um, on MTV in, in heavy rotation. Uh, my, my favorite tracks uh, are, of course, Holy Diver, Ed mentioned Invisible. Man, I just love the fucking riff in that. And uh, the, the, the uh, last track on the record, Shame on the Night. I think to me that is the most Sabbath-like uh, record, uh, Sabbath-like song on the record. Uh, it's very Sabbathy, and also Evil Eyes, which is could be my favorite Dio track ever, was wow. actually recorded for um, Holy Diver. It was released as a as a like a B side. I have the Japanese, yeah, there you go. It, like it was like a single. <laughs> I'm like, man, this track is so great. How did you leave this off the record? Mm. Uh, but they did. Uh, I've interviewed Ronnie and Vinny Apice uh, quite a few times, and mm. I remember specifically interviewing Ronnie. He did that uh, Man on the Moon, I think it was called, in like 2004. Hung out with him in New York City. That's when I peed next to him after the interview. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I remember talking with him because they were doing, they either had just done or were about to do a 20th anniversary uh, Holy Diver tour, which unfortunately never came to America. It was only in Europe. He told me the story how European promoters wanted him to do something different, and it was the anniversary of Holy Diver. So for that one tour, they played the whole record from start to finish. Uh, but Ronnie just, you know, repeatedly told me how proud he was of of that record and how. Oh, there you go. Yeah, uh, Ralph's got the the new version, which I, I think sounds great. But man, I hate that they changed the album cover. I don't know what the fuck they were no, thinking. Is, that's a fucking this horrible is totally idea. Holy Diver Live. This is totally oh, Diver oh, right. That's right. But it looks it looks like the same guy. It looks like the same artist that did the new uh, the new shitty Holy Diver artwork. Uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, Holy Diver is a great record. And yeah, my number one. Uh, no surprise. I'm a Sabbath loyalist. Uh, Born Again, yeah, everybody talks about the production. It's kind of muffled and muddy and shitty sounding, but I love it just the way it sounds. It's fucking uh, just booming and heavy. Uh, sure, I would love a remix. I'd buy five copies if they fucking ever come out with it. Who knows if we'll ever live to see it. Um, I've interviewed Tony, Geezer, and Ian Gillen. They all had great things to say about it. Um, I in interviewed Ian Gillen when he did that Gillen's In solo record. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, he had re-recorded Trashed with Tony Iommi, Ian Pace, and Roger Glover, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, you know, it wasn't as good as the original, but it was cool because it let me talk to him about that record. And he was like, you know, because some people have said all sorts of shit about it. And he's like, listen, man, that was the greatest year of my life. Wow. He's like, it was a one-year party with those guys. <laughs> he's like, I never had so much fun recording and touring and it sounded like if the deep purple reunion hadn't come around uh he i, I don't think he would have left i mean you know he definitely would have done at least uh one more record uh and I, i'm a huge danzig fan uh and i love the fact that john christ from danzig stole the riff from zero the hero for the song uh her black wings uh and my favorite tracks are, uh, are trashed zero the hero and the um the lost track the fallen which wow. when I, I love that track. It's got Ian, Ian does this, this great wow. double tracked vocal thing. And I remember at the time, the last Born Again reissue wasn't out. So I had this bootleg, which had the Fallen on there. And I asked Ian Gillen about it. And he's like, oh yeah, that's, that's legit. You know, I asked him why it was cut. He's like, I don't know, just like he didn't really know. Nobody really knows why the mix got changed. And it was mm. so shitty sounding. And he did tell me the famous story that he felt like he wanted to vomit when he saw the album cover, but I love the album cover. No, Ralph's wearing yeah. the shirt. I'm, I'm wearing the uh, shirt. Yeah, I, I forgot to wear so, my shirt. <laughs> uh, and yeah, of course, that was stolen from some medical book from like the seventies, which Depeche Mode also, right? Didn't they do an album, an album cover yeah. off of that too? So, but anyway, yeah. that's my pick. Uh, number one, Born Again. Nice, awesome. Thank you, Chris. And uh, cool. I'm going to move over next, just in line here on my screen. I've got Count Ralphus. And it's, hey, it's Count Ralphus's birthday this week. So, anybody that's listening in the area, we've got a big show, free show this week here in Middletown, right by the Rock Fantasy with Jotunheim from New York City headlining. We've got Slayer, tribute band, Show No Mercy, the debut of Reaper in Middletown and crucial pain that's all this weekend in middletown new york saturday night 
at Quinn's Pins. Come out and support and uh, say hello to Ralph. Uh, happy birthday early, Ralph. Happy birthday, oh, Ralph. Birthday, Ralph. Ralph. Thanks. So, start off with uh, nice. got the uh, old original vinyl. Yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, uh, you know, after the first two classic Ozzy albums, this was a step down, but I, I I like Journey to the Center of the Eternity. I liked Waiting for Darkness, number two. And my number one is Bark at the Moon. I thought it was one of the best videos ever. Mm -hmm. I love the album cover. Um, it, it was great seeing the production pictures of Ozzy getting made into the werewolf. It was like a perfect thing for him. Mm -hmm. Real fun album. Uh, I still love it, but in this, this category, it's got to be number three. Going to number two, I'm going... Dio, Holy Diver, my autograph by uh, Vivian and Vinny. Um, oh. Unlike Chris, I, I like that that they when they did the reissue that they gave it some new artwork. It just makes it a little different, you know. I thought it, and I thought it came out pretty cool. I got it on uh, mm. on CD. Too. But uh, I think it sounds great. I just I don't like messing with the classic. Mm. I did. Well, that was no, different. I agree, Chris. Different. I thought it was cool that they put a different cover on it because it yeah, is different. A little, thought, a little bit of thought to it more, you know. I like it when bands do that, make it something a little bit different to have. We all got multiple copies of it, you know. Here's a picture Oops. disc of it, you know. So, uh, yeah. So uh, on that one with Dio, I'm, it was hard picking three songs, but I'm gonna go number three, uh, straight through the heart. Number two, stand up and shout. And number one, holy diver. Off the whole album's fucking great though. I love it. But uh you can't you can't beat Bill Ward, Geezer Butler, Tony Iomi in the same band, but uh then throwing Ian Gillen in there and mm. he, I gotta go number one, born again. Fucking love this album. Uh I'm gonna go for number three, it was so hard. I, it was between the song Born Again and Zero to Hero. But I guess I'll go with Zero to Hero. Then number two, Disturbing the Priest. Mm. And number one, it's Crash. I just, I love that song. It's like such a banger. And uh, I just love the lyrics. It's fun. And uh, I, I've gotten drunk and crashed my car and flipped it over. <laughs> so it, it resonates with me. While, you were, while you were listening to that song? Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bark at the moon. Oh wow! Thing. Had a nice. head knock wow. Oh, cool. Nice. I got a, an Aussie head knock or something. Here's the original Holy Diver shirt, and I have an yeah. original Bar Moon T-shirt, but I couldn't dig it out in time mm. for this episode. But uh, yeah, the big Aussie Bark at the Moon toy. It's got some deep purple bootlegs. No nah, purple, purple Sabbath. Purple Sabbath. Purple this Sabbath. one's fucking really great. This is there's probably different multiple versions of this, but. Really awesome uh, recording, and uh, hearing him do the Dio songs and stuff is really he he was awesome. Mm. And uh, yeah, I, I can't I can't beat it. It was hard though putting it above Holy Diver because they're both yeah. such important albums. But mm -hmm. like I said, Easer, Bill Ward, Tony can't beat them. So mm -hmm. born again for the excellent. Chris, there's a little story about the thrashed uh, song that they were talking about. I don't quite remember all the details. Do you? What, yeah, what they... I mean, that was that was pretty much uh, biographical. You know, they uh, I believe that uh, they went out drinking and Ian Gillen, I think, borrowed a car from Bill Ward. Right? <laughs> they said they were four Granadas. There we go. And, and yeah. yeah, flipped it and got all fucked up. And I mean, a lot of the lyrics... I don't know who mentioned it. I mean, maybe it was Ed. You know, the li lyrics, it's definitely different from, say, the, the Ronnie lyrics because it was a lot of, you know, real life stuff. Mm. You know, like, uh, right, Keep It Warm was about uh, his girlfriend, Ian Gillen's girlfriend at the time. You know, Trashed was about, um, yeah. you know, him getting fucking drunk and, and, and getting in a car accident. <laughs> you know, Disturbing the Priest was about the band rehearsing and playing too loud and disturbing the local townspeople including a, a priest at a local church hmm. so there was you know a lot of uh real life stuff that went the lyrics you know whether that was you know the the right way to do it or not who knows but i, I thought it came out pretty good 
Mm-hmm. All those stories are in this great Martin Pop yes, book. Which is a very good book. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Excellent. Excellent. All righty, so Sabbath taking a, starting to take the driver's seat here a little bit. Uh, two wins to one with Dio. We're going to go over to the midnight hour here, or whatever hour it is, over in Norway and talk to our Norwegian heavy metal buddy, Ovi. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, well, I'm going to stir up the hornet's nest here, and I'm going to start with my number three, which is Black Sabbath. Wow, and, and, the, the, and the reason is is Iron Gillen. If there's been any other vocalist, it would probably gone to the top. But I don't wow. know if, if Iron Gillen would just sing instead of squeal all the time, I would be <laughs> happy. <laughs> but, but that's a matter of taste. That's a matter of taste. But my song number three is Digital Bitch. All right. And number two is Zero to Hero. And of course, number one, Born Again. All right. Yeah. And for number two, we got ourselves Dio. Wow. Yeah. You are shaking things up, brother. <laughs> yeah. And um, song number three for me is Gypsy. I really like Gypsy. I think it's a good track. And number two is Caught in the Middle. I really like Vivian's guitar there. And number one... Uh, like uh, Chris talked about, a good song, Shame of the Night. I think it's the best song in the whole album. Okay. Ovi and shaking then, things up. Uh, yeah. He's turning it upside down, brother. Yeah. <laughs> of course, then we have Aussie number one. I l- really love that album. I think it has it's the, the synth and everything. Is, it's such a dark and cool album. It's it's so different from people was expecting probably something similar to Diary of the Madman and trying to living up to that instead of us. He did flip it all around too and did it a total different direction than the two first albums, which I respect. And for me, for the three favorite uh, songs on that album is number three is Spiders. Uh, number two is Waiting for Darkness. And number one is... Center of Eternity or Forever, as it's oh. called over here, I think. Oh. And here's a question for the for the entire panel. And uh, Ovi, maybe you know. I, I don't know. I read this today. I hadn't heard of this before. Um, but apparently, when they did the CD a few years ago, at least in the states of Bark at the Moon, uh, I read. I just read it today that they used different mixes from when your album was originally released in 83. That is 100% true. (laughs) I have the CD. I never compared to the the tape. The one one that has the one that has this on the back there. It is not there. At least a few of the songs. It is not the ones that you've grown up with. Okay. Uh, Like for, for example, bark, uh, bark at the moon. A lot of Don Airy's keyboards are taken out of, of that song on, on this version. Um, an, an, uh, another example is uh, on Rock and Roll Rebel. If you, we all know the song. There's right after they do the riff uh, in the in the, the normal version. There's a solo before any singing starts. On this, no, that solo is taken out. Interesting. And so wow. it's it it's it's remixed. It's not it's not like the what they did uh, with. Uh, uh, the right, first few albums where stuff. you took out where you took out you know everything yeah that version that the so, that, uh, Christian is holding up that so that's has, that the has original regular mix. remastered you know original mix. versions of it this oh, okay. it is remas it is remastered this this one has two extra bonus songs on it spiders and one up the B side I believe the one that that uh, uh, Christian held up only has spiders on it. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. uh, Interesting. but uh, that's the that's the uh, difference. But there's had, some ki- no there clue. are some keyboards taken out of this. And w- when I bought this, uh, this is uh, the third time I bought this because I had it on cassette and then the old the no- regular version. I went through a kick of re- buying all my stuff, you know, to get them remastered. And so I got this and didn't listen to it because it's like, well, I've heard this so, so many times. And then I'm like doing something and I'm like. Wait a second. That's not the same goddamn song that I've known all my life. You know, I mean, like, like something's been changed with this, and it's and it wasn't re-recorded, but it's definitely remixed. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they just somebody uh, you know at CBS just took took from the wrong tapes. I mean, this happens. Yeah, Greg, you know, on Blu-rays all the time. Mm -hmm. they, they Center of Eternity the also, if you can just, just like in your mind, you, the, the the chanting at the beginning, like the monks chant, that's not the same on this one. That was replaced. So it's like, uh, for fun, pull it up, some, pull it right. up online or something. If you don't already have mm -hmm. it and you, you will, you, you guys all, you, you know, this album inside and out, right. you'll, you'll hear that and say, eh, wait, something's, something's mm -hmm. different with that. Definitely. Interesting, interesting stuff. All right, so Obi, were you all finished up there? Sorry, yeah, I just put no, that's fine. Glad you brought it up. See if he knows uh, knows why Stonehenge was cut down for the album. What was the question again, Toby? Uh, Stonehenge is right. cut down on the album to only two minutes instead of four. Do you know why? Um, there's no, no clue other than you know four minutes, four and a half minutes for an intro. Kind of sounds too long to me. Mm, so maybe yeah, that's why they, totally. you know, they cut it down to the the two minute version that's on the okay. record. The longer version was probably used when they played live. Played live, yeah. You know? Yeah, the bonus tra the bonus track on this it has it says extended version. Yeah, mm -hmm. the right. Plus two, they had to have the that the crying baby, which only lasted like a week or two. Mm. Mm -hmm. the <laughs> that's a classic story. Yeah. Craig, that Craig, the bonus CD does that have that extra track? This does. This has uh, yeah. the Fallen and yeah. a uh, live set with Ian Gillen singing from the Reading Festival in August of 1983. It's uh, it's a little surprising that the Spotify version does not have that track, even after that's been remastered. You would a lot of times the Spotify record has all the extra stuff, like oh. the Spotify version, because yeah. that's what I was listening to today when I was out hiking and stuff. Look, giving all the albums another listen this afternoon. There wasn't any extra tracks on it at all. So uh, anyhow, we're going to go down to North Carolina and we're going to talk to Tony Dio now and see what he's got to say. As you know, uh, Denny's, go, Denny's doing a great job. He's sending me some pictures. He's keeping score just like a hockey coach would. <laughs> That's it. Awesome. You got the Excel spreadsheet going on, guys? We're yes, good. he does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, all this stuff, you know... I, my world with, with with a lot of heavy metal stuff was between 82 and 84. I just discovered so much stuff and Ozzy and Sabbath and everything, Dio, everything was getting discovered in just like a, you know, an 18 month period, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, but I remember, I, I think I, we're going to go as far as I'm going to in order of this. I'm going to, Ozzy is going to be my third pick. Uh, I remember, Getting Bark at the Moon. I remember it came out late in the year, and I think I got it. I remember getting some money for Christmas and going out and buying it right after Christmas. Yeah. For the first time. And um, that was the first tour that I, first time I ever saw Ozzy was on that tour as well. And uh, so uh, I, I love the album. I think it's a great album, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to put it third in line. Uh, if I'm going to pick songs uh, from it, my top three are going to be uh, Waiting for Darkness, Center of Eternity, and number one is going to be Bark at the Moon because Jakey e. Lee's guitar solo on Bark at the Moon, it's a badass song to start with, and his solo is just out of this world. Just in his one of his best solos ever. Um, we were talking, you were just talking about a different mix on it a while ago as well. Uh, I have the, the European version here, which looks a little different if you see the you're used oh, to seeing this version that. in the States. Mm -hmm. European version is blue, like a blue logo. And Sin of Eternity is called Forever, Forever. on this pressing. Mm -hmm. And um, also um, the song Slow Down, which Chris says is a horrible song. Yeah, uh -huh. Slow Down is not on it. it. Slow Down was used as a B-side in Europe. They have a song called Spiders, which Ovi picked a while ago as one of his picks. And uh, Slow Down, I mean, Slow Down is actually... I listened to it today just, just to go, was it that bad? It's actually a pretty hard driving song. It kind of kicks in like yeah, uh, Children yeah. of the Grave. But those <laughs> damn keyboards come in and make it sound like the reflex by Duran Duran. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, you know, but I always um, thought it sounded kind of like uh, an Iron Maiden ish song. You know, just slow down. Yeah. But um, but yeah, um, so uh I have a couple of things to show I got. There's a So Tired single. Oh, no. There's a Park at the Moon single, 12-inch. Another So so Tired 12-inch single. Oh, Chris, you, might, Chris, you need to get those. 
Yeah, I didn't. I didn't bring any stuff. That's like your. That's like your U, The U.S. single where they actually did a picture sleeve for it. You know, yeah, that video they did for so. I had never liked the song, but that video was creepy. I mean, some of the characters Ozzy played in it were pretty hideous looking. You know, for I mean, he did. They did great with the makeup and all, because like Ralph said, I mean, the the the, the bark of the moon uh, werewolf. Now here's a Japanese. Oh, yeah. Oh wow! That one, that one, is, and it's got some different B sides and stuff. But I mean, they really went out. I mean, that's one of the best uh, album covers ever. There's actually the Korean. I wish I could find a Korean press, and they, I guess, they found the werewolf to be too scary. And oh. the Korean pressing is just the logo and the moon. There's and it's blacked out where the werewolf and the wow. tree is. It's kind of wow. crazy. Wow. So my number two pick is going to be Born Again. All right. Um, I love Born Again. It's a great album. I didn't get this album probably until 84. I had the song trashed on a compilation. Um, uh, I think it was called Masters of Metal, one of those K-Tail records. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing the videos and stuff on MTV and all. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of, I had, the only thing I owned by Deep Purple, it was Deepest Purple I had picked up at the time. So I was just getting into them and Ian Gillen's voice and so forth. Uh, it's got some great songs on it. My my dad never really complained about my music much, but when I would play this album, he would go, why do you have to come home every day and play that record with that <laughs> screaming guy on it, that old screaming man? All he does is scream. And and really, Ian Gillen's vocal performance on here is top notch. I mean, he's got some blood curling screams on here. I don't think he, he sang like this on anything after that. I think he may have blown it out on Born Again Tour because – he never did any like the blood curling scream stuff on any of the later deep purple stuff much at all. Um, but uh, for my top three picks on this one, I mean, you got a lot of the filler stuff on here with the little intros. So there's not but like really six full songs, but uh, I love the uh, disturbing the priest just as such a wicked song. When he comes in with that laugh and it's got that, that the drum beats like a heartbeat and he comes in with that wicked laugh. It's just, it's, it's so cool. And uh, I'm going to go with uh, Born Again. I thought it was just cool for a ballad, but it's so heavy. And uh, for my number one, I've got to pick Trash just because that's the first song I heard from it. And Iomi's guitar work on that is so cool, too. He's just got that blistering guitar solo. And, and between that solo and the screams and the whole story behind that song is just wicked. And um, such a cool video. We're talking about the Ozzy video as well ago. The videos that they did for Zero to Hero and for Trash were really crazy. They had these, it's almost like a, some weird sci-fi movie or something. They're they're both kind of connected in the storylines with the characters and stuff that they have in it. Um, number one, of course, is going to be Dio. Got to do Holy Diver. Um, this record, uh, I, it changed my life and it gave me a nickname in school when I started wearing <laughs> Dio t-shirts constantly after this. Um, but I saw the video um, on MTV for um, Rainbow in the Dark and Ronnie up on the rooftop with white boots and just looking wicked as hell. And I knew Ronnie from Heaven and Hell because I had heard Heaven and Hell. But it just, I was like, this is really cool. I got to get this, you know. And uh, so uh, ended up getting it. And just like I said, I just loved it forever. And I, I can't say that there's a bad song on it. I guess a 10 out of a 10 record for me have a Holy Diver uh, UK single, Rainbow in the Dark single. Um, my top top three songs, I mean, that's almost impossible for me to pick on here, but I'm going to go uh, Stand Up Shout, I'm going to do uh, Gypsy, and I'm going to go with, my favorite would be Don't Talk to Strangers. I think that's Vivian Campbell's best recorded guitar solo. Brilliant on that song. So that's going to be pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for your uh, time. And no now more. we know now we know how you got your nickname, Tony Dio, because I didn't know. Well, I didn't know until tonight. My brother bought me a Dio t-shirt and brought it to me uh, for Christmas that year, I think. No, it was actually 84 because it was a last in line t-shirt. And I went on the web the I went on the little the inside of the record had the thing we could get to the to the um joined the fan club do fan club so i joined the fan club and i bought every t-shirt that they had wow. i think it was four total and maybe a three-quarter length jersey and three t-shirts and just wore them all the time and i had a jacket with do logo painted on the back so you know everybody in our little clique had a nickname and that was mine so 
<laughs> and I told Ronnie, I told Ronnie the story one time. He says, why do they call you Dio? You're just too fucking tall. And <laughs> well, I used to wear your shirts all the time. He says, well, it's a good thing you didn't wear Madonna shirts all the time. <laughs> just Ron, if, you, if you ever met Ronnie, you just say, that's his humor. You know, he's just, he's a trip, man. So now we know in school, they're yelling down the hall, yo, Tony Dio, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was a New York accent, North Carolina, but anyhow. No, yeah, not North Carolina. <laughs> you weren't North Carolina then. No, I said, no, you wouldn't have heard that. No, in, you in wouldn't. North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm going to move over to a fellow North Carolina resident, at least he is right now, Mr. John McAtee. Welcome tonight, Mr. Sarah. Well, I, pl I plan on staying here, so. Um, you plan on staying? You're not you're not moving back to New Jersey? No, I don't see that happening. <laughs> um, it was fun while it lasted. You know, it was fun being a kid there. But um yeah, okay. Um for me it was really super easy um to figure out what was my favorite. Um, so I'll start with my least favorite, uh Ozzy's Bark at the Moon. Yeah. Uh, besides a few moments, I, I really don't like the album very much. I, it's like my third favorite Ozzy album, but it goes from like the first two are great, you know, probably diary mm -hmm. and then, um, uh, blizzard. And then this is like a way far down. Um, you know, I mean, at the time when it came out, I liked it, but I can't take all those damn keyboards on it. And, I, and listening to <laughs> what was what Craig was saying that there's a, a mix without the keyboards. I might actually like the album more like, yeah, like stuff like slow down with that little do do do, or like it was like they were just accents and really, really happy accents throughout the album with those keyboards. It just it just washes it all out. I think it's just the song bark at the moon. I think slow down is is as is, but the song bark at the moon has Don Airy's keyboards pretty much removed. Yeah, I mean, I because I and and I love Jakey e. Lee's uh, as a guitar player. I think he's an amazing guitar player. But I just think everything he's done with Ozzy just doesn't really accent his playing that well. Like at least riff wise. I mean, solo wise, it's great, but it's like just for some reason those damn keyboards are just too much. And I'm not like super anti keyboard, but it just sounded too <laughs> soft on the album to me. You know, so it's it just, very eighties. It's very dated. It but it's it it's like eighties like non metal sound. Yeah, it like doesn't it said, sound like a Deep Purple or nothing. It sounds like, like Duran Duran. Yeah, that's a good a good comparison. It just to me just doesn't fit. It's like they were forcing to try to make it commercial sounding or something by mm -hmm. adding those keyboards to the songs because yeah. I think a lot of the riffs in the songs and the overall songs are, are pretty good. Um, but you know, I mean, Jeff. Yeah, it just, I'm not going to fight the keyboards on it. It's like, I'll just listen to an album that just has less keyboards on it. Because others, you know, the other albums have keyboards on it too, but they're not washing it out in like a really happy way. You know, it's like, they're almost trying to make like a happy Ozzy album or something. But Bark of the Moon is such a good song that it like carries almost the whole album. Like, because that is a great song. And that's easily the best song on the album. So I gave away my number one, but I don't think it's any surprise. Um, but anyway, um, I mean, yeah, Waiting for Darkness is my number three. Like um, mm -hmm. was Ed said, you know, it's 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 a pretty dark song. I think it's one. It's definitely one of the best on the album. And uh, what's it? The Center of Eternity is my number two. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. I think almost everyone mentioned the same ones. And Bark at the Moon number one. The the reason why is because those songs are the least lame with the keyboards at, on the mm -hmm. album. You know, mm -hmm. and they're like the most. They're the most. They're almost the most Aussie songs on the album. But and because to me, almost everything else on there, if I never hear it again, I wouldn't be bummed. You know. <laughs> um, but uh, and and that being said, when it came out, I did like it a lot too. But then I just um, it just. It was like it hit hard and then it just like, you know, almost became a tough listen. Like I do, I do break it out every now and then and say, let's just give it another listen. And it's like, no, I still think it sucks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, anyway, my number two, that's also an easy one. And that's um, Dio. Um, I think the um, Holy Diver album is amazing for sure. Um, but, it, it, you know, it, it can't compare to Black Sabbath on Born Again. I mean, those are that's apples and oranges. I mean, 
Um, but I won't, I won't get into Black Sabbath part. But Dio, I mean, the album's stellar. I mean, I love I love all the songs on it. I love it from start to finish. I mean, it's it's I guess for most people, it's a fair fight between that and uh, Born Again. It definitely blows away. Uh, we would call Bark at the Moon as far as a full album of quality material, in my opinion. But um, yeah, I just think it's great. I mean, um, Vivian Campbell came out of the gate, you know, on fire on this album. His solo on this album was an inspiration for myself to want to pick up guitar. I mean, just hearing the shred on this, it was like it's and it wasn't like that lame ass shred of just trying to like prove how cool you are as a guitar player. This was like meaningful soulful shredding but it still had that attack that made it intense but it had like a feeling it seemed like everything was in place like they it was really well thought out this album um and so it's it's really difficult to pick my favorite songs i really do like the whole thing but i think um shame on the night is really one of the best as uh, my number three on this album um i think chris said it had like it's probably has the most black sabbath vibe on it so that's obviously a winner for me on anything if it sounds like black sabbath um my number two i was having a hard time picking i'm, I'm gonna pick uh don't talk to strangers even though i was gonna go with straight through the heart because I, I think that one's a great one too but mm -hmm. don't talk to strangers it's a great song i mean the the feeling in that song the the, the riffing the you know, Ronnie's vocals, everything is just a top notch on that. And my number one, I mean, it's really tough to choose, but I just, I have to go stand up and shout. I just think it's a killer opener. I mean, when I first heard that right off the bat, I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be great. You know, it was like, I was, I was one happy camper once I just heard that, that riff. It was just, a, it's just an amazing. So yeah. And then going to Black Sabbath. Well, first of all, this Black Sabbath album is it, it i i always hate to say it but it's my favorite black sabbath album it really is i mean it's hard not to like this album as my favorite black sabbath album. i mean it's crazy because i love dio sabbath so much and i love especially the early ozzy sabbath so much but this was just blew my mind when it came out i mean just beyond comprehension i mean i was getting into deep purple i, I probably had Deep Purple's Deepest Purple at that time. And once I heard Ian Gillen let loose on this album, I was just like, holy cow, I just can't can't believe how good it was. And I, I immediately tried to like find out other stuff where he's saying like that. I was kind of disappointed because I couldn't find anything else where he went off as hard as he did on um, Born Again. And, um, you know, to have that talent of Ian Gillen with the rest of the guys in Sabbath. I mean, that's just, that's firepower there, you know? I mean, it was, I, I think like Chris said, people complain about the uh, mix on the album. It's too muddy. And I, that's all bullshit to me. I think it's a great album. <laughs> I loved it the second I heard it. I love, it sounds dirty, but what the heck? It's freaking metal, you know? It's like, well, everything's supposed to be nice, crystal clear. I mean, it would be called something, it'd be like, you know, I don't know, uh, call it aluminum if you want it really clean and nice. <laughs> aluminum. If you want it like really, you know, thick, heavy, gross, you know, that's freaking metal, you know, and give me a break, you know. Um, so, yeah, Born Again is, it, it's, it's. I mean, the only problem with it is there's just not enough songs on it. It needs to be, need to be a triple album, and I would have been happy, you know. Um, but I, I do love the, uh, uh, um, the new, you know, the uh, repressings that they did with the uh, bonus tracks, you know, the Fallen. I'm so happy to hear that one finally on, you know, uh, like a actual mastered release of that song. Even though I know it's still kind of demo material, it was just so nice to hear that. And I'll tell you, those those live bootlegs whew, are so good. Mm -hmm. If you're a if you're an Ian Gillen fan and Black Sabbath, I mean, it has everything. They're the songs are so heavy. It was just like they got on steroids where they just wanted to make things heavier than mm -hmm. it was even before in the earlier Sabbath. That that tone that um they all really they all have. I I mean on that uh on those, you know, bootlegs sound amazing. And even though Ian Gillen struggling to sing parts or whatever, that attempt to get there is just so amazing and so much feeling. Cause you don't even care that he can't reproduce some of the stuff live properly. It's like the fact that he's just giving it all and just pushing yeah. himself. It's just it as you can tell, this is like super, 
super important to me. I mean, this is like the origins of, you know, I think the, one of the first albums that hit me so hard where I just knew my, um, you know, this was like fulfilling that need for fucking metal, you know? Um, so anyway, picking a top three is, it was, it's, it's, I'm only picking it because I have to pick a top three because I'm just <laughs> picking the whole album as the top three. Um, I had another fight for number three. Uh, this is not even the right, the right fucking song. Um, what was it? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I was gonna go. I was gonna go with trash because I mean that's an amazing song. But I think I'm gonna go with keep it warm. I just think it's a, such a great song, and um, it, it just yeah, it just rules. Um, number two, I have to go with born again. I mean, born again is such an amazing ballad it's like the heaviest ballad ever it just feels like you're walking through sludge like this you know um throughout the song and, and the album version is great and the live versions of that are just phenomenal and just the way that Ian Gillen sings on it is so emotional and it just has so much feeling on it when he goes to those high screams from the really sensitive kind of singing it's just like it's mind-blowing it's just like those whoosh, whoosh, and just it's just it blows my mind. And for my number one, it's pretty obvious. It, it has to be because it's probably one of the best songs ever written and most most um, interesting structure. As a guitar player, I, I love the structure of the riffing in this song, but it's just an overall amazing song, and that's Disturbing the Priest. Mm. I mean, that's easily, easily one of the best songs ever in any music. That I, For me, it's like... Picking, you know, one song to listen to for my rest of my life, I could easily go with that and I'll be perfectly fine. I, it's almost like no other song needs to exist. But um, yeah, it, it really, I mean, the riffing in it is so good. The way, it's just something about it as a guitar player. It's just, I listen to that. I'm just like, how did you come up with such a song that is so amazing, but unlike a lot of the other stuff that you did, before with you know just a different feel to it just it shows the mastermind of uh, Tony Iommi at his um you know one of his most creative um points I mean it's kind of like it's the visionary of some of the stuff in the uh, 70s but with the power and say the modern um you know metal sound of the 80s so for somebody who was a fan of the 70s but grew up in the 80s that's freaking perfect so that's what I got to say. Excellent. Excellent. And, I, and the, oh, one thing I have to say, too, is Ozzy's Bark of the Moon is, in my opinion, is doesn't even deserve to be in the in the same planet as either of those two albums. It really doesn't. Mm. As far as quality of songs, you're talking like, um, you know, three, three good songs to two albums with almost complete perfect yeah. songs i mean the only complaint anybody should have with born again is that there's interludes instead of fucking more songs because we could have definitely used more songs than yeah. interludes. even though i don't mind interludes i don't bitch about them they're great but i still would rather hear two more songs than that so my question for everyone on the panel before i forget and don't do this question is how many folks here actually saw the born yeah. again tour no, I, mean... I did I, I wish I did. I thought you did, I, I John. Saw, I saw yeah, all three I tours. It. I yeah. saw all three tours. You, uh, thought, you saw all three? I Born again, I... Bark of the Moon, and Only Diver. I mean, I think I did. Wow. Yeah, but... bastard. The, the <laughs> Black Sabbath Born Again night. I just remember my wife picking me up. Uh, I'm not, I'm trying to remember what time of year. I think it was in October that tour was. Do you remember, Chris? Uh, I believe they played the Meadowlands and Nassau Coliseum. It was like October 29th, 1983, yeah. and like October 30th. Quiet Ride, right? right? I remember. Ride, yeah. Right around Halloween. My story for that was I was in Middletown at the fairgrounds at a, at a dirt track race, drinking all afternoon. I'm remembering like, I'm going to see Black Sabbath tonight. My wife picks me up and drives me there. I was probably the most inebriated of any show, maybe any show I've ever been to. Wow. And You're I trashed. wasn't enjoying it as much. And Quiet Riot was the opening act. And at the time, I liked Quiet Riot. But after seeing Quiet Riot live, I didn't like them anymore. 
And it was a tough scene for Quiet Ride to be opening up for because that was back in the day. You were opening for Sabbath. Between each song, the whole crowd was like, Sabbath, Sabbath. And I tell you, that shirt, everything, it was such a great experience. And I was so wasted. I was way up in the nosebleeds looking down, and I thought I saw visions of actual hell that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, the, I'm sorry. The, the only the only Sabbath, I mean, only um, time I've seen them play anything, I think, is when they did the Seven Star Tour, and they played the yeah. Riff for Zero, the hero. I, I was, was there. That, yeah, and I, I, and I was like, I was so happy when I heard the riff, but then they went it went into like a medley with like Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, and something else. Like I think no. it had um I forget, mm-hmm. but they did I, was I think just, it was Sweet Leaf, Zero the Hero, yeah. and uh, the one the one off maybe it was, some, yeah, maybe it was Symptom of the Universe. Symptom of the Universe, yeah. That was another and, Metal Land show. Yes. And mm-hmm. I was so pissed because it's like he went into that dun, 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 and I was just like, Oh yeah, because I, I, at that time I was I really still really into the born again album and they started mm-hmm. going to i was like oh this is going to be great and then they went into the other I mean, other riffs were good too but i really 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 wanted to hear some born again stuff on that tour and they did only that riff which was very depressing actually so yeah and that was another historic night because glenn hughes was out of the band after that gig that night yeah that was the last night that he sang for them because his voice was messed up. But they booted him out, yeah. and Didn't Black Nichols Sabbath. Some of that? What's that? Didn't Nichols um, yeah, sing Nichols some of the? Yeah, on, he, uh, I think he helped out on some of the vocal parts because uh, I remember the vocals were really bad. But I was so happy to see Sabbath that I yeah. didn't care. Yeah, you know, it was like the experience of seeing Tony Iommi play guitar was enough for me to be extremely happy, even though the singer couldn't really sing. You know. And we're living we're living through that time period, and you're you have the singer from Deep Purple, of course, Ian Gillen, which was a big deal when that happened. With if you were alive then, you know, a lot of younger yeah. kids watching us weren't. And then, like, he leaves, and then they go get another singer from Deep, Deep Purple, Purple, even yeah. though I only didn't want to call that Sabbath anymore. Then, but that's a whole other episode for another time. But uh, just mm-hmm. something I thought we could end a little conversation. That's what people watch us for, right? Yeah. Yep. So uh we've got another vote for uh Sabbath and uh we're gonna come over to uh visit with Mr. Craig Kaminsky and then we're gonna go over to Sasquatch and we'll go to Christian who thought up this episode and myself and if anybody else pops in, we'll put them in last. I don't doesn't look like he might be making it tonight, Mr. Pardo. He's up in Boston. Well, I, I was gonna say, uh I, I don't know it was Tony or, or John, but one of the guys mentioned uh Ian Gillen, you know, never vocally being uh nearly uh as as mm. crazy uh, as shrieking as he is on Born Again. And Pete Pardo definitely has the the Born Again theory that uh Ian Gillen's voice was never the same after first recording the record and then doing the tour. Wow. Pete's the biggest purple fan that I know. Pete, he, Pete is, he is. Well, yeah, he may yeah. still pop in. So uh, and I, I was and I was happy for when when uh Deep Purple got back together, but it was like it wasn't good because it was at the expense of Sabbath, which I was just like that was a real bummer. It was like a I was happy but also let down, you know? Yeah, I saw that tour at the Meadowlands also, the perfect strangers, but what would have you, you don't know what would have happened if Deep Purple didn't reform and Gillen stayed and the direction of Sabbath would have took in the States because after the Glenn Hughes tour, Sabbath hardly even toured the United States when Tony Martin, they, they dropped off the face of the earth here in the United States. Right. I, but, but I, I think if they would have kept Ian and uh, Ian Gillen and Geezer Butler, mm-hmm. I think they would have they would have got another another yeah. year or two in before they, they shit the bed. And yeah. I just listened to a, uh, a Tony Iommi interview uh, recorded during the Born Again tour. And he absolutely, he said, because the interviewer asked him, and he's like, oh yeah, no, this lineup is going to do another new record. Mm. You know, we're going to take a, a short break and then we're going to do another record. So it sounded I like wish. that was, sounded like that was in the plan until mm-hmm. Deep Purple came calling. Sure, sure. All right, so hey guys, before you get going, I gotta take off. All right, Ed, so off. thanks for joining yeah. us tonight. And uh, this conversation, I'll talk to all you guys soon. Yep, yeah, see you next time. Right. Yep. 
All right, Craig, it's your turn to see what's going on here. And our scorekeeper, I hope he's still keeping score. I'm fucking doing good, man. You're doing the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Uh, the pleasure is all on this side of the screen. And uh, I've mm -hmm. uh, you know, enjoyed watching watching your episodes before. And it's, uh, again, it's great to meet meet everyone who, whom I haven't met before. Mm -hmm. But uh, my number three, to uh, mirror what uh, a lot of other people have said, my number three is, uh, is also Bark at the Moon. Um, my first exposure to this was seeing the video for Bark at the Moon. Uh, and I, and uh, I was uh, 11 when this came out. And so I had to have this on, on cassette at the time. And so got it. And like, I think, uh, John had said, it's like, I, you know, I love Bark at the Moon so much. And then the next song is, is, uh, you're no different. And even as a, <laughs> even as a young kid, I was like, Hmm. I don't really like that one. You know, I'm next song is, you know, now you see it, now you don't. And that has those weird keyboards, you know, in parts. And it was kind of like, even as a little kid, I was like, nah. but then Rock and Roll Rebel brings me back, you know, to it. Flip, flip the side over and uh, Center of Eternity. I love yeah. that song. And uh, I actually don't mind so tired as a as a ballad uh, of Ozzy. Ozzy's got a lot of ballads, but mm -hmm. I, I, you know, so tired is I, I'm actually okay with that one. But uh, but my three favorite songs on this would be the general consensus rockers on this, and that in order being Bark at the Moon, um, Rock and Roll Rebel, and Center of Eternity. But uh, I I still do like the album, but just as compared to these three, it, it's. It's in my number three, but uh, my number two, I'm going uh, also to mirror what some of you guys also said. I'm going with uh, Holy Diver. Also, right. I actually have, I actually have more of a history with Last in Line than uh, than with Holy Diver because when I saw the video for Rainbow in the Dark, it, it, the the first one it, that I saw, I. It it I I liked it, but it didn't grab me as much as when I saw the video for Last in Line and and We Rock. When I saw those, it was like, wow, I got to go out and I I want that that tape uh, of of Last in Line. Holy Diver, I was a little bit of a late a late bloomer for me uh, at the time as as a kid, even though it's a even though it's a you know great great album. Uh, my 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 favorite songs on on these, I would go with. Uh, Hello, hello, hello. Dreams. You've had some weird, you know, you've had things like that in your in your life, but a great song, uh, a great song nonetheless. But my number one uh, is definitely Stand Up and Shout. And uh, whenever I, I tend to, uh, if I'm listening to music, I'm either driving or I'm at the gym. And if I'm doing something at the gym, I don't care what it is, that last part of stand up and shout where he says you know you are the driver you own the road <laughs> you are the fire go out explode i mean it's like you know when you yes. hear those what i don't care what you're doing you know whether you're chopping wood or you know <laughs> doing do you know do, doing something at the gym you're driving you're going to go faster you're going to pick up an earth or you know over your head <laughs> you know break a wall anything i love i love that song it is it's probably probably one of my top three of uh of dio uh of his from his solo albums just just love that but my number one first exposure to this as tony had mentioned was also hearing it from that ktel album masters of metal uh -huh. my brother my brother had that and the first song on that is trashed uh albeit a uh, slightly abridged version um but that was the first time i heard that and it was like wow you know just hearing those those screams and that as as a young kid you know he, hearing that and going out then and and you know and getting this album and it, it's just the a lot of the songs they just really they just they grab me you know in, in a, and yeah the, the the mix is is kind of i i do look forward to the 
uh, remixed or re, you know version when it comes out. I, I you know I I really you know I really do want to want to get that. I mean I'll probably still hold on to this for posterity. But um, but yeah, love this album. Three favorite songs. Uh, my third, I would go with Zero the Hero. Uh, or Guns N' Roses totally rips rips that off with Paradise City. Just you know, just speeds it up slightly, but uh, with the riff on that. But just a ten ton rumbler of a, of a song. And I and quirky as they are, I love the lyrics to this, where it's like you know, your your life's a six lane highway to nowhere, <laughs> and you know, just all the Great. all the the wacky lyrics, you know, in in you know, in the song. Love it. My number two, uh, I, I, I'm I going with Trashed as my number two. Uh, again, the, the first one I heard, but I love it. Love the solo, love all the, all the screams in that. And my number one is and always will be Hotline. I love that song. It is uh, whenever I, that's another, whenever I hear that, uh, usually, especially when I'm at the gym, when you uh, just, you know, sh you know, show me a sign. You know, it's like when, you know, when you get that to that last part of the song where he's all in high, high pitched, where it's like, put me on the hot line, you know, it's like, I mean, it's just where he's, yeah. I mean, it's like, I love it. And that, that, Dude. that is, is and always will be my favorite song on this album. And uh, so, yeah, yeah. Born, born Again is the tops for me. Cool. Cool. Very cool. Born again is really uh, surprising me a little bit tonight because my employee was so mad at me the other night. We got in a fight. I almost fired him. Wow. <laughs> well, first off, uh, you know, after, we had an after party after our show we had in town on Saturday night, and a guy comes up with his girlfriend. He picks up Never Say Die. And Oof. the guy's talking about how great that album is. And I said, I love that album, too. And uh, John McAtee, I, I even threw his name. And I said, you know, the dude from Incantation, he loves that <laughs> freaking record, dude. And, yeah, uh, th and then then he's going, well, it's an awful record. Then he got a couple of guys to hop in behind him. Where they all, and then we started talking about Born Again. Oh, absolute garbage. So, Frank, this one's for you. Frank's <laughs> like, I wish I knew how to do Zoom so I could vo vote for Vote for Dio. So he's voting for Dio, even though he's not on the show. But uh, look who we got in here. We, the, 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 he could be a tiebreaker later on. So uh, <laughs> Mr. Pete hey. Pardo on the road uh, and here at the here with us now. And good to see you. What's up, and, everybody? Greetings from Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah, I'm uh, out in Boston, watching Boston, the yeah. watching the Bruins game. Well, no, I haven't been watching. Okay, <laughs> I've, I've been drinking beer and eating, but yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> All right, so uh, that sounds good, Pete. That sounds can you, good. Can, can you hang out a little bit, Pete? Yeah, I can hang out for a little bit. All right, so uh, we're gonna go next to uh, up into the up into the northwest territories of Canada and see Sasquatch Denny Bar, who is also playing scorekeeper tonight. So uh, you know he could always twist that thing around. So uh, you never know <laughs> if he wants to cheat, he could uh, he could he could twist the number around. But no, no, I don't I don't need to he, cheat. The best could, album he, the best he, album's gonna win tonight. <laughs> He could uh, he could uh, adjust the poles or whatever, as they say, right? <laughs> All right, Denny, so let's hear your uh, two cents or three cents on this one. All right, I'll I'll go quick because I got a bit I got a, quite a bit of stories and uh, like just from the tours and the tree shows that of Peach. We you know, like the album. stories, you know. But uh, like the the first thing I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys and like I might come come to shock to a lot of you, but today, like on February sixth to twenty twenty three. Mm. Was the first time I ever fully listened to Bark at the Moon, the album. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So, and uh, just because, like, um, I, I I was such a Randy Rhodes fan. I see, I saw him live on the Blizzard of Ward, uh, of Oz tour in Montreal. I was, I was 14 years old in front of the stage and I shook his hand. Like, he, he was like, clapping hands in the front and I got his hand, right? So, wow. uh, and then, um, and then after that, uh, when when uh, you know, like after the the mastery that is like uh, Blizzard of Oz and and uh, Diary of a Man Man, it was almost like impossible for whoever was going to play guitar to be able to match like that 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 type of music. So I, I went to the store. I went to the Rock Rock on Stuck in Montreal, uh, famous like metal uh, store owned by Banzai Record uh, owner. So. 
I went there, bought like Bark at the Moon, went home, put Bark at the Moon, and I was like, fuck yeah, we're back. <laughs> and the, the next song started with the keyboard, like you're no different or something. And I, I took it off. I, I literally took the needle off the vinyl. I put it back in. And every time I would listen to that album, I would only listen to Bark at the Moon. I wow. never, ever, ever. And today I was listening to the album and I, now I remember I know the songs from hearing them like in bars and or, or like you know like somewhere, but I like waiting uh, to that darkness. I think they had a video on uh, on uh, on Much Music in Canada or on MTV in the states, and I used to shut it off when it would play. Like I don't know why, but it, it anyway. It's it's my last album. I only have one song I like on the album. I can only even pick. <laughs> okay, but I I, I love Bark at the Moon. And I I. I listened to Center of uh, of Eternity today, and I did listen to like Slow Down and and all these other songs, and it's just not for me. Yeah. At that time, I had so switched to like uh, Exciter and Anvil and 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 like Riot and Saxon that I was completely not okay with the beginning of keyboard of that <laughs> song. So I so I, I anyway I listened to it today. So that's my number three album. Only one song I like, and it's Bark at the Moon. And okay. It was not fair for that, but for that album to to be released after the first two, because mm. it was just too. The first two are so strong. Um, I saw the tour, and what a fucking shit show it was. So listen to this: uh -oh. so it's, Spark, it's Spark at the Moon tour in Montreal. At that time, I think if I remember correctly, because it's my memory of those evenings are like very shady of at course. best. <laughs> but uh, I think Ozzy shaved his head. So Ozzy appeared on stage with his shaved head and he had like a type of a Roman helmet on top of his head. <laughs> and they started with Bark at the Moon and after uh, like maybe like um, just just at the beginning of the, the chorus, um, of the beginning of the first verse, they stopped because Ozzy forgot to sing and he got mad. Mm -hmm. So they stopped and then they went, they they. they they, they stopped, put the curtains back. They like went back, <laughs> made us wait another 15 minutes and restarted properly. So wow. I don't know what he went to do backstage to like improve his memory. But anyway, he, he, they came back and it was not the same as like the, the Blizzard of Oz band and even like the, the Diary of a Man Man tour with like Bernie Tormey on guitar uh, that I saw in Montreal was much better with... Uh, Ban and everything. So anyway, not a great Bark at the Moon is not a great experience for me, but I I, I really love the song. I think it's a great song. Okay. That's your number three. <laughs> number three. <laughs> number two. Uh and I think like back then it might have been my number one, but now today, like at a, a tender age of 56 years old, uh, my number two is Holy Diver. Okay. Um and I saw the tour Holy Diver. Anvil opened for them in in Montreal. Uh, there was about it was about a five six thousand seater arena for like junior hockey. Anvil killed it that night, but so is Dio. It was just an amazing show. Um, like everybody mentioned, there's not really a weak moment on that album. Uh, but of my top three for this album, I I'm gonna say it again. It might sound like I'm a poser or something, but "Rainbow in the Dark" is my number three songs. Like I, all great... my friends who were not into like metal, like listened to that, and then they were they were slowly coming over, and it kind of like was a transition <laughs> song for a lot of them. But I like "Rainbow in the Dark." I like the melody. I like it. Uh, number two is "Don't Talk to Strangers." Great, great intro. Great riff. Um, it's got a little bit of that rainbow vibe in places during that song. So I really, I really enjoyed that song. And number one, my favorite song with my favorite heavy metal guitar solo of all time is Stand Up and Shout. Like, because and I told, uh, I told like Vivian Campbell when he came on this channel for the, the Tin Lizzy episode, I said to him, like, I don't know what you ate that day, but Jesus Christ, is it ever like an amazing solo? It's well crafted. The song rocks. Like the album, like it takes like five seconds, and then you're like, okay, I like this. It didn't take that long. So um, so that's for number two. Number number one uh is born again. I think like now that I'm older, older, um I just can appreciate 
the darkness and the like it's just like really like if you look at the Sabbath transition from the 70s to the Dio years to that album like I mean it's dark and heavy it, it was just as heavy as some of the new wave of British heavy metal band coming out and, and some of the darker bands even uh, you know so like but I gotta talk about the show so Nazareth hoping for Black Sabbath in Montreal wow. and Nazareth was like they were like it probably like their party years or something. It was not their greatest performance. I needed to wait to the choruses to, to know what song it was, especially like Razamanaz was a train wreck, and most of the songs were train wreck, but but so like so they started the show, uh like Black Sabbath started with Children of the Grave, like with Yin Gillen singing, which was like, you know, kind of like um very weird to hear for the first time. And then they played Hotline, which, you know, like, perfect. But it was obvious by song number two that Yin Gillen had maybe too much to drink that night. So <laughs> then they get into War Pigs, and it's like, uh, I think it's Bev Bevan from ELO, the drummer. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. So, so he was playing drums, uh, and they did a long intro. And then I think Yin Gillen wanted to do something, so he brought a bunch of bongos and he was playing bongos while while warpig was going on but then he and he moved his head and he got it maybe he moved too much he started like throwing up all over the bongos really and, and I, as he's throwing up he's hitting the bongos and the like the this throw is up is flying story. everywhere in the air like <laughs> it's just 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 uh and, and i'll never forget that moment because i'm like like he didn't even stop playing. <laughs> he's, he's just like <laughs> arfing and just like keep the beat on. Um, wow. So yeah. So born again. The rest of the show was great. The band was was good. Uh, favorite three songs. Number three is uh, "Keep It Warm." Like John mentioned, uh, I just I like that vibe of the song. You can you can feel the dope oozing out of the speaker, like. It reminds me of like Kiss, uh, Strange Ways, or or some of the obscure track by certain bands. That's really like, um, you know, like if you listen to deep tracks, like uh, sometimes you get you get some of those like songs that people don't really appreciate. But that one has that like cool vibe to it. Uh, number two is Born Again. Um, I know, I, and over the years, that become like a kind of a go to kind of moody type of song and. Uh, the voice is great, the tune is great, all is that. And then for number one, I'll say whatever, everything that John said, like disturbing the priest, Jesus Christ, was <laughs> they like, like what was going on to Tony Ayomi's mind when he <laughs> built that riff? Like he must have been like the most possessed he's ever <laughs> been in his entire life. It, the, the time signature make no sense. But it's just the notes and the heaviness of it, and the just the way that it's constructed, and even the part where they go into like a musical interlude. It's just like it's it's so evil. It it's it's it's, it's beautiful. I like it. So that's it. That's my uh, that's my three albums and songs. Oh, sorry, only have one song for Bright of the Moon, but that's. Right. Uh, for me, born again to the this day today, best album of the three. And I think the strangest story that we've heard tonight about Ian Gillen. Yeah, but well, I was gonna say that the Mon the Montreal show was uh bootlegged on VHS and it's it's been on YouTube for a number of years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I never noticed Ian Gillen puking, but it is shot off VHS and it's pretty rough. So it yeah, certainly rough. could be there. I'll have to pay pay Check more. Check it out. Time. Check it did out. He the... War Pigs. Or whenever he play, I'm pretty sure he was playing bongos. Thought... He definitely did play bongos. And then... I thought it was on <laughs> on on uh, Children of the Grave. I thought on uh it, yeah, it could be. I can't remember. I haven't watched that. And there's there's a ton a of. It's not only shitty quality, but there's yeah. a ton of dry ice, so it's really hard to see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fuzzy yeah, dry he, ice, he, had, he didn't he didn't know the lyrics uh, to a lot of those by heart, so he would have yes. car, he would have cue cards on the stage, and then when the dry ice came up, like couldn't read them anyway. Yeah. Couldn't <laughs> read them. Yeah. Train wreck, but amazing. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's awesome. Thanks, Denny, and uh, we're gonna move over to the person that gave me the idea for this episode a few weeks ago. Christian, welcome. Sorry to make you wait so long, and then we'll have Mister Pardo, and I will wrap things up for this episode. We're keeping Chris up late, but it's a subject he likes, at least. 
for sure. <laughs> We're hearing all kinds of crazy stories tonight. So, all right. Well, I'm glad that you that you like the idea for this show. I actually, um, <clears throat> on my own YouTube channel, I had done like a a six part Ozzy versus Dio series, going like album to album, year to year, starting from 1975 up until like into the I don't know, 2000s okay. or whatnot. So when I got to 83, it was these two albums. Um, but probably unlike a lot of the people on this panel, I wasn't, um, well, I, I was around in 1983, but I was a toddler in 1983. So mm-hmm. um, can't say I remember any of this stuff coming out at that time. But I was, uh, at least when I was in high school in the mid 90s, that's when I was getting into a lot of these bands. And I even broke out my um, Ozzy t-shirt that I had back in high school out of uh-huh. retirement just for this episode so um i guess i'm going to start with my least favorite of the three it's probably um probably in agreement with most everyone else here uh that would be bark at the moon um i still think it's a pretty good album uh, but i don't think it's as good as a couple that came before it and uh i probably prefer ultimate sin and probably even uh no rest for the wicked um mm. over this one um so this is the 1995 reissue and um i know a couple of you guys mentioned there was a song spiders on this version it's called spiders in the night yeah okay mm-hmm. interesting yeah. so um uh, but anyway i mean i thought um jakey e. lee i like a lot of his solos on it um you know overall it's you know it's it's got some really good songs and then some other songs that I tend to skip over on it. But um, if I'm going to go with my number three on here, it's probably going to be uh, Center of Eternity. Uh, number two, I'm going to go with uh, Rock and Roll Rebel. And I, as far as I know, I think it's the only song where Ozzy actually swore in the lyrics. I give you no bullshit and I love it pretend at least. I mean, of course, he was swearing, you know, on stage between all songs. But I think that's the only one where he says a curse mm-hmm. word. Uh, and then, of course, number one's got to be the title track, Bark at the Moon, freaking killer song. Uh, so then next up, number two for me is going to be um, Born Again from Black Sabbath. Uh, so I first um, I, I got this uh, bootleg VHS from uh, and it has um, a, a lot of different it has Don Kirscher's rock concert on it. I got this probably it was at a. One of those record shows or bootleg show back in 1996 or 97 and um you know a lot of this stuff on video you couldn't just find it back then before you know before youtube and before the internet and it had a couple had the um videos for digital bitch and zero or live version of digital bitch and then zero the hero and at the time it didn't really um make too much of an impression on me but then a couple of years later or several years later i was at a friend's house and he had an old VHS with videos you recorded off MTV and of course trash came on and you know we're sitting there drinking so I'm already kind of trash I'm like man this is freaking killer so eventually I um discovered that album and you know found out that I actually enjoyed it uh quite a bit um but I'm going to go with my uh top three on that album um uh, I'll probably start with uh Hotline as uh, as my number three killer song um number two is going to be trashed uh great song great lyrics great story and then probably my favorite one off of uh born again has got to be disturbing the priest i think it's probably probably the most evil song that sabbath that they ever did maybe except for you know their debut their title song if you will Mm -hmm. it's probably their most evil one yeah um but yeah, also I know I, I think it was Craig or there was someone that was commenting on some of the the lyrics on this one. You know, I I love the title track on this one, but gray and plastic retards floating in circles has to be one of the dumbest lyrics that I've ever heard. I still love the song, but just you know, the, my first time hearing that, I'm like, what did he just say? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I still lo- I still like the song. I still love the album. Um, so obviously, my number one has got to be Holy Diver. All right. Um, so I bought this at Merle's Record Rack in Wallingford, Connecticut, for a whopping ninety-nine cents. Wow! Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> yeah, that's a forty-dollar record now. What's that? That's a forty-dollar record now. I know. I, I, <laughs> look, this was. Uh, I want to say it was maybe my sophomore year in high school or so. So that's like nineteen ninety-six, ninety-seven. So that just goes to show. Final. At that yeah. time frame, you know, 
mm-hmm. how much people are really paying attention to Kyoto about Dio. And look, if I knew that vinyl back then would cost what it does now, I would have bought a lot more records yeah, back then. For sure. <laughs> who, who knew back then, you know? Um, but anyway, uh, you know, I think just top to bottom, this album is, I would say, a perfect, near perfect or perfect album. Um, I just think the the rhythm section on this is really tight with uh, with Vinny Apice and uh, and Jimmy Bain, um, and and I think it just allows like you know Vivian and Dio himself just to really soar on this one. Um, I find that it, and this was the one that was just the toughest to pick like a top <laughs> three songs. But if I'm gonna go with uh, number three on this one, I'm gonna probably go with "Don't Talk to Strangers." I just think it's a well crafted song. I just think you know, and, and the lyrics are thoughtful too. And I mean, Dio always, I think, wrote very thoughtful lyrics. I know he said in in an interview, um, you know, he would always try to write where you know it wouldn't always be obvious what the meaning of the song was. It's kind of like, well, you know, it's like what you think about it and what you think it is. Um, and then probably number two, "Stand Up and Shout." I mean, it's a freaking barn burner of a song. Yeah. Um, and then number one, I just I got to go with the title track, but you know, right. really, any you can't go wrong with anything on this mm-hmm. record. So it's a masterpiece for sure. Yeah. But thank you, Christian, and uh, Mr. Pardo, it's your turn. And uh, Danny, do you want to give us a little update? We'll wait until I go, and then you can give that update. How's that? After Pardo, you can give us uh, the score, and we'll see if I can make any difference with the last one. You got it, brother. All right. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for uh, allowing me to jump on this show. This is uh, an interesting little experiment with these three great albums, right? But uh, I think for me, number three was a no-brainer, and number one and two was really hard. And I'm still sitting here thinking, like, <laughs> which order am I going to do them all? Because, I, you know, I've been, I've been sitting here dealing with coming to Boston today and everything that's going on here, but it, this has been in the back of my mind all day. So, I mean, number three is Bark at the Moon. No yeah. surprise there. It's, and I'm, I missed most of the show, but I'm sure most people have that at number three. And it's a decent album, right? And I think, uh, you know, I bought all these albums back in the day when they came out. I saw all three of these tours mm-hmm. and was totally into this back in 1983, big time, like all three albums. And I still enjoy these albums but i I will say that i have found in more recent years that after blizzard of oz and diary of a madman i find most of the ozzy output after that has kind of really fallen off a cliff for me i still enjoy it i still think there's plenty of fine albums and a lot of great songs i don't think there's any ozzy album that's a classic after those first two that's kind of where i'm at today with most of his output but bark of the moon is good it's really solid. I think Jakey e. Lee was a great choice. There's great guitar riffs and solos on this album. It's just that you listen to those first two albums and you listen to everything afterwards, and I get it. We're nearing like mid 80s, late 80s, shortly thereafter. And like hard rock and metal is changing a little bit, but I find like a lot of the stuff on here is kind of light, but still enjoyable. As far as like my favorite three songs, I'm going to go with number three. I'm going to go with Center of Eternity. Number two, I'm going to go with Rock and Roll Rebel. And number one, I'm going to go with Bark at the Moon, which is my, was my favorite song on this album back in the day. It's still my favorite song on here. Jakey Lee was a great addition to this band. It's kind of kind of sad that he kind of got shafted by the band and Ozzy and Sharon like after a couple albums, but mm-hmm. that's not like a story for another day. So, man, number two, I don't know. The, the both of them are kind of like tied for number one for me, but I'm going to pick one uh, and I'm going to go with kind of where I'm with these albums today and how much I listen to them today. So I'm going to go with number two. I'm going to go with Holy Diver. Probably if you would have asked me five years ago, 10 years ago, it, it would have been my number one. Uh, and it's it's a fantastic album. And a couple of folks have mentioned it's classic from top to bottom. And I totally agree 100 uh, percent. I love Dio miss them greatly this was a great band vivian campbell this is the best guitar work he's ever done on any album period kind of sucks that it was the first album he you know really was a major release for him and that we're still looking at that as the best guitar work of his career but it is what it is uh as far as like ranking my favorite three songs i'm gonna go with man side one is so good all right let's go with don't talk to strangers number three 
classic, uh, just so emotional, so powerful. I'm going to go with number two, Stand Up and Shout, which is one of the great album openers of all time. I don't think anybody would argue that. And my number one favorite on this album has always been my favorite, and that's the title track, which to me has an amazing riff. It's kind of, it, to me, Holy Dyra could have fit on a Black Sabbath album that came after Mob Rules with Ronnie on it. It's so good. And it's my favorite Vivian Campbell solo on that particular track right there. So great band, great album. Love it. Could be my number one. If you ask me next week, I may change my mind on this, but uh, I'm going to go with uh, Born Again as my number one. So for those who know me, know that my two favorite bands of all time are Black Sabbath and Deep Purple. So when this album came out in the months leading mm -hmm. up, I was crying that Ronnie was no longer in Black Sabbath. I was distraught, yep. disappointed and hurt that Ronnie and Sabbath were no longer a partnership there. And then all of a sudden, one day I read in a magazine that Ian Gillen was in Black Sabbath. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I guess I'm OK with Ronnie not being in the band anymore because <laughs> Gillen is my other favorite singer of all time. Right. So yep. I was like, this is was amazing perfect. coming together. Right. Perfect, perfect storm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh and i remember like when that album came out i'm thinking all right big red devil baby on the front my mother's gonna hate this but i don't give a shit like whatever <laughs> uh i love the album bad mix or not i think this is the heaviest most evil black sabbath album of all time yeah. it contains one of my favorite vocal performances from ian gillen ever i don't know about you guys but ian gillen screeching and screaming up a storm is what i want to hear yes yeah I think all day long. <laughs> so evil and amazing on this album. It, it's no surprise that like my two favorite Ian Gillen performances are Deep Purple in Rock and this album, because those are the albums that he is like screeching yeah, like a crazy yeah. dance. And I love it. That's what I mm -hmm. want to hear Ian Gillen do. Yeah. So uh and I remember this tour. I was drunk as shit as this at this show at the Meadowlands, and it was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. So my three favorite songs here. I'm going to go with, uh, again, this is tough. I'm going to go with Born Again, number three. Again, it's slow, moody, doomy, and Ian is, it's like, to me, Born Again is like Child in Time, part two. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. Love it. Number two, I'm going to go with Disturbing the Priest. <clears throat> it's just evil as fuck, right? Just <laughs> killer. And number one, I love Hotline. I could listen to Hotline over wow. and over again. It's heavy. It's grinding. Ian is screaming up a storm. And uh, yeah, it's, but you know, the whole album is full of classics to me. So uh, as far as like the mix, everybody complains, ah, it sounds like mud. It's just like, yeah, it does. But that's part of the charm of it. I'm really interested to hear like this new mix that apparently, you know, Tony's found like the master tapes. And I'm really interested to hear what they kind of come up with here because it's like, you know, I would be fine with born again, sounding like we know it forever till the day I'm in the ground. Right. Mm. But uh, it will, it'll be interesting to hear. And I've heard like, you know, the, the thing that's floating around on YouTube and that sounds amazing, but uh, yeah, this was, it was a fun tour. Everything you guys said about Ian, you know, reading everything off of teleprompters and, having a hard time singing the, uh, you know, Ronnie's lyrics because he's not into that. Ian is all about, you know, stories about, about women, stories about booze, crashing cars, all that kind of stuff. So he has gone on record many times saying he could not relate to a lot of the Sabbath lyrics of what came before him. And uh, so he really, he just couldn't memorize any of it. He didn't, I don't think he really wanted to either. So, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, whatever. Ian obviously had a great time in Sabbath. He would get drunk before every show and just do his thing. And, uh, you know, when it ended, I was totally stoked for Deep Purple Mark II reunion, but part of me was kind of sad that like they never did anything else. And part mm -hmm. of me always hopes that maybe one day like Tony and Ian will do something together again because I think that would be really cool. So there's my that would be awesome. Yeah, you know, they did those couple songs for that little uh mm. thing a yeah. bunch of years ago, which was really cool, but I would love to hear them do a whole album again. But you know, again, Ian can't sing like he used to, so eh, maybe it's for the best. I don't know. But mm. uh, I, I think Born Again is absolutely terrific. And I always like kind of shake my head when I meet people and they're like, oh, that album's terrible. And I'm like, oh, it's so terrible. Yeah. I was like, man, come on. Yeah. You so. missed out in that conversation just a minute ago with my employee Saturday night after our uh, party the other day, after our concert. He almost got fired. 
But I didn't. Uh, we were joking, but first he started cutting on never say die, and that doesn't go well with me. And well, that okay. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can cut on never say die, just don't say shit about born again. No, no. <laughs> But then he was like, that boy, God, that's awful. It's like Deep Purple on Sabbath. And I'm doing Frank's voice because Frank sounds less like me. It I doesn't think. sound we, we like have... Deep Purple at all. That's the No, crazy. exactly. <laughs> but we have to show Frank the better way. Maybe Ralph will help me next time. He'll be at the birthday party. We'll play We'll play plenty of this album in between sets. How's that? <laughs> so, uh, Danny. Oh, one sec, really quickly. One thing I want to hear from that a born again is i want to hear all those vocal outtakes that they didn't use on the album put that even if they don't, I don't even great. need the music i could just listen to ian gill and scream like that <laughs> yes. for like isolated like 45 track. minutes that would be amazing because yeah, cool. yeah. those are so I, I can't emphasize how good those screams are they're so good some of the put best on, i think like, ever album. put it on like a halloween show. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the scream of Halloween, Halloween with Ian Gillen. <laughs> hey, we're lucky you know, we, I was gonna say we're lucky we got that track, "The Fallen," when yes. we did, because mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, the agreement that uh, Tony Iommi had to succumb to with Sharon Osbourne was that they are uh, Iommi is not allowed to release any Sabbath records um, with unreleased songs other than. The original Black Sabbath. Ooh. So had the Fallen not come out when it did, Cheers. we would not Cheers. get it today. So you have like fuck, you have like seventy thousand million dollars in the bank. Why like? Yeah, agree. Yeah, they're yeah, managed awful. by her her father anyway at the time. I don't see what the <laughs> yeah. okay. right. at, yeah. at the time. So we'll have to call sucks. it uh, Purple Gillen or uh, per, uh, something. Call it something else, at Tony. Yeah. If you're going to pop it out for us, please. <laughs> hey, I wanted to mention that you guys that actually saw the tour, um, and and it's a piece of uh, kind of uh, comical history there that the Spinal Tap got the idea for Stonehenge supposedly from the Sabbath tour because, mm. you know, they had the tiny little Stonehenge, but supposedly Sabbath mm. Stonehenge was so big that it wouldn't fit in some venues that they were and they couldn't use but parts of it. Mm -hmm. They yeah. only used it like once, I think. Yeah. It was yeah. too big. And it's it's yeah. in the video that Denny saw in Montreal. I think they only used like three pieces because they, right, they did the whole thing life-size and it was it couldn't fit anywhere. It was too big. <laughs> that, so if I'm that, not mistaken, they they when the tour was over, they just yeah. dug a hole in the desert in Arizona, <laughs> and I think they 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 threw the rocks in the air, the fake rocks, and then that was it. Wow. Uh, it's next, uh, next to so all the uh, the Atari uh, ET yeah. games, right? Right. And old Star Wars figures and all the other good stuff. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. One the, the, other thing I got to bring up too is I just I can't help it that album that album just means so much to me in that that era of Sabbath. I have some live recordings of them doing uh, Rock and Roll Doctor with Ian mm -hmm. Gillen singing for, I don't wow. know if that's on the reissues, but I think it was on some of the European, like, it was like a European radio show or something. Cool, like, that I have. Yeah. It was, did Rock and Roll Doctor and Supernaut. On I the, know. Wow. Oh, man. That would just and be Ian amazing. Ian Gillen doing Heaven and Hell is pretty wicked. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I know. Yes. The second leg they brought in Neon Knights on the 84 run. They didn't do Neon Knights the first tour, but they did it on the second U.S. tour. Yeah. Yeah. On this yeah. one, they do, they do Smoke on the Water. Black Sabbath yes. doing yeah, that. Was, they always did that. Yeah. 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 That was, uh, oh, that's the right. Encore. You sure did. The yeah, only that was, cover that was the encore in Jersey. Play live. Well, anyhow. I have a question for the panel. Before I give the score, I have a question. Okay. So, like, after, like, Ozzy left Black Sabbath, it's obvious that, like, Tony Iommi had a hard-on for Richie Blackmore's singers because – so he had he started with Dio, then he went with Gillen, then he went with Glenn Hughes. Yeah. Yep. Did he, he ever did anything for... else with any other singers that sang with? We tried for Coverdale. There, there was talks more. with David Coverdale, and that fell yeah. through. Could you and imagine? Believe the last time grabbed... grabbed Ronnie Romero, so you know. <laughs> I was going to say, I yeah, yeah. Joe Lynn Turner in the yeah. 80s. <laughs> I yeah. think Joel, Just Joel, think if he had got if he got covered, it would have been called that White Sabbath. You know, hey, good, deep or, or Black Snake. Good or point. <laughs> he did. He did. He got. He got wow. Joe Turner. So there was another one. Sure. Well, he didn't. But well, that's right. Joe Turner wasn't. Yeah, Joe Turner was. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, anyhow. Right. So, so the scoring the way I did is no, I did one. I gave one points for pick three, two points for pick two, and yep. like three points for pick one. So Bargain the Moon is way back at twelve points. 
Number mm -hmm. two is Oli Diver at 23 points. And we have uh, Born Again at 25 points. Wow. Oh, oh all right. shit. So, so, so I guess I could change things, but I don't you think could I'm going to change uh, things. I could. So I guess it's my turn to, find, to end the show. No pressure. <laughs> my number three, uh, drum roll, please, is Bark at the Moon. Uh, so Waiting for Darkness, Son of Eternity, the title track. Everything's been said already. And we really did use the song Slow Down just to so Pardo could make the show. We tried to slow to slow down the show. You know, haste is making way, slow down, join the human race. Pete Pardo is gonna be on a little while, so we slowed it down. So uh number two yeah, it's gonna be keyboards. Number yeah, no, no keyboard. Do, 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 do. Uh <laughs> so number two is going to be this is a tough one. I tell you what, if it wasn't Black Sabbath, uh it wouldn't be number two, but it Dio's with uh Holy Diver, straight through the heart. I love that song. It was hard to pick three off of two. Caught in the middle, I really like a lot. And I'm going with stand up and shout. Of course, I love Holy Diver. I like Rainbow in the Dark. I just figured that was a little played out. I tried to dig in a little bit deeper. And Ralph told me and Ralph were in the store on Saturday or Friday or whatever. He got some tattoos and he was in bullshit with me in the afternoon, Friday afternoon it was. And uh, we were talking. He goes, I know what you're picking. You're definitely picking Sabbath. And of course, I'm not going against Sabbath. And I love Born Again. I've been listening to this album and I keep going back. I was walking today and I went, I listened to Born Again. Let me give Dio another thing. The Dio thing was growing on me more because I love that album too. But there's no way I'm going against Born Again. Uh, Thrashed is my number three, but it could change. Zero the Hero. I just love that riff. It's like that groove. Is it almost like the birth of groove metal too? That song was that June you know, so much groove to that, just that riff going on and on. And then of course, disturbing the priest. One of the most evil songs. I was telling my our, our friend Karen from uh, Hudson Valley Squares, Karen La Preziosa, of course. I was at a party with her the other night and I'm like, it's the most evil. And she goes, wait a minute. She wasn't that familiar with this album. We got to make her listen to it, Pardo and Ralph. So uh, she was talking about like, how can it be more evil than the song Black Sabbath? I said, it I is, don't know, it is. but it is. It, but it is. is. Yeah. It is. Uh, you know, I, close. it's close. It's close. Yeah, it's close. But uh, I'm going with Born Again. Born Again is getting the win. I'm a little bit surprised. I really thought Dio, the Dio album, I mean, it held its own. It was only two points behind. So it was a great battle. And thank you, Christian, for bringing this up. We've got a whole bunch of 1983 that we're going to be working on in the next few weeks. I looked at the list before we taped tonight, and I'm looking at there's so many different albums that we could throw together. And I know there's one album, Merciful Fate, Melissa, that I don't know what to put up against because I think it's going to slam anything from that year. Venom so. at War with Satan. Oh, yeah, that one too. That's a good one. All right. So, uh, mm -hmm. well, 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 tune in soon and you'll find out what we decide to rock and rock on in the next few weeks. We've got some 73. We got 83. We got 93. We got 2003 even. So we got plenty of homework to do on the channel. I hope everyone that's watching enjoyed this show. It ran a little long. We're keeping Chris Allo up past his bedtime. <laughs> and, uh, I gotta go to sleep. It was so good to have Chris Allo on. It's so great to have everybody on tonight for Tony Dio, for Ovi. And Ovi, you picked Ozzy number one. We needed you tonight. Count Ralphus, Craig Kaminsky, who we stole from Pete Pardo. Uh, Christian, Danny, Ed Farsley, who had to go to work and left us. Of course, John McAtee and Pete Pardo. Please. Uh, Stole from Pete Pardo. And of course, viewers, please mark down your favorite moments from this. If you saw them in tour, talk about the tour, but list your favorite and subscribe. Hit the like button and all that good shit. And we'll see you again next week. Boom on the Rock Fantasy YouTube channel.